Sports Live in the ATL here. How you guys doing? As you can see, rainy, rainy, rainy. And you could probably also tell there's something missing here. The Slitomobile. The Slitomobile is in the shop, leaking coolant. Looks like it could be a cracked uh, coolant box. Or the cord was loose or the rope was loose below because I could see some of that leaking and the cap. Either way, it's going to be fixed. I could be without it. I'll definitely be without it today, most likely. Unless they get it done by 5 o'clock, which I don't know. I took it in around uh, 10.45, walk back home. Um, or at least definitely tomorrow for sure, hopefully. He told me it would probably be a couple days. So, Road to 3K is in full effect. Share it to all your media outlets. Click the bell, like button, dislike, like, whatever. Cash that PayPal Super Chat to show your support for the channel. So, obviously, I have nothing to do. I mean, I, I, mean, I kind of do the same routine daily. You know, when I'm off on, on, on my days off and everything, but uh, today is going to be more cleaning later and, you know, drinking some later and eating some later, working out and just relaxing, man. Because, like I said, I can't do much, but uh, it is what it is. Now, I know I've done a lot of videos on, on the Falcons, and I have Braves Brewers stuff coming up. I'll probably talk about that uh, tonight during the, the Dodger and the Cardinals wild card game. I will be streaming the game live at 8, 10 p.m. Thank you, Boston Red Sox, for eliminating the Stankies. I know Bad Dog is a Yankee fan, and Kyle Nitro is a Yankee fan, and I know some. I feel for y'all, but, dude, y'all have more rings on your hands and fingers and your toenails than, than any of my Atlanta teams ever ha ever have, would, will ever have. So for that, I don't feel for you, but from a competitor standpoint and a passionate fan, I do. But y'all got more than enough rings to sustain you guys. Uh, but I know what it's like to lose a, a wild card game, and I know what it's like to lose in the playoffs, and we could still lose. Who knows? 50-50 shot. I could be eating my words later. But I am happy that the Red Sox eliminated these stankies, and I'm going to uh, broadcast the game tonight at 8, 10 p.m., and hopefully the Cardinals will eliminate the Dodgers. Beast of the East, Big Bear. We'll see what happens. Now, but let's get back to the Atlanta Falcons right now. I mean, you know all the news, Isaiah Oliver, uh, torn, whatever, he's out for the year. Hey, I hate injuries, but, dude, you may have had a decent first couple games of the year, but since you've been here, you have been trash. So, to me, it's no loss. Really. You got Falcon fans all crying and moaning that the Isaiah Oliver's out. Okay, he gave us a sample size of success when, for years, he's been here and he hasn't done jack. So, I'm sorry, man. It's kind of like Dante failure. He sucks since he's been here. He got two sacks in the first two weeks, and what has he done? He let one get away last week. That pretty much cost us. Just terrible. Um, again, I blamed Arthur Blank, you know, and I'm, I'm going to explain why in more detail. Falcons going to go to London, probably lose to a terrible, terrible New York Jets team. And that's sad. And I'm going to be streaming that at 9.30 in the morning, only to lose by noon. Um... But why do I blame Arthur Blank? You know, first of all, it's the first of all, it's the players on the field that got to perform. So they're at blame. All of them on the def defense. It doesn't matter about the offensive line issues. No matter, you know, you notice whatever offensive line issues we have, we still put up points to win. No matter how many times Matt Ryan gets sacked, we still put up plenty of points to win. No matter how many false start penalties or or our missing blocks, Matt Ryan and the offense always puts up points to win. Enough. 25 points in week two, we lost. 30 points this past week, and we lost. How many times last year did we put up enough points to win, and we lost six times? It's terrible. You know, people can say what they want in their opinions, but you know damn well the defense is the reason why we have been trash and hasn't won a ring. I mean, pretty much, like I said, a few hiccups of defense, 2000 and, what, not, what 1998, 2010, uh, 2016, 2017, almost every other year has been terrible defense. We run through coaches, defensive coaches, like like you drink water. Just turn on the faucet, spit out one coach, drink it. Coach gets fired, turn on the faucet, another coach comes out, water, drink it. Same thing's terrible. And I blame Arthur Blank overall. I mean, players got to play. Coaches got to got to be in the right mindset to know what to do and when to fix it and stop doing the same damn things that have been screwing us up and knowing how to draft talent. They don't. They don't know how to draft talent. They don't know how to correct a problem. They don't know how to speak to the players at halftime. They don't know how to adjust. They keep making the same mistakes. That's stupidity on their part. 
And the players are just not that good. And I blame Arthur Blank. Why? Because Arthur Blank is the one that signed that signs these coaches to contracts and pays them umpteenth of millions of dollars to screw up this franchise and to let us down. That's Arthur Blank. I know Arthur Blank is a Home Depot guy and, and all that, but, you know, he's shown what he could do. He's done it with Atlanta United. He's shown that he has some um, mental capacity of what it takes to, uh, to put a, a winning team together. I mean, I know Home Depot is, is, is bolts and hammers and wood and plants and flowers, but you got to put a successful team together in retail in the Home Depot to make it work or it goes under. Same with the Falcons. Right? I mean, Arthur Blank, you have totally lost your way. You keep bringing in these coaches who clearly have no clue what they're doing. I mean, it's not like it happens once every five, six years. It has happened every year since 2017. It has happened in the or middle 2000s. I mean, look at the, what, the, what are these defensive coordinators that we've had. And the one that we did have that was good, um, Marquand Emanuel, you, Arthur Blank, allowed Dan Quinn to convince you to let this man walk. Dan Quinn clearly wasn't capable of taking over the defense. Look at the trash that he has, that he had here. Part of the biggest choke in, super, in NFL in sports history. And then, Latin, and, and then in 2000, and, uh, last year he didn't learn it. And then you get Raheem Morris to take over for a couple games, look great, and then he made stupid mistakes late. I mean, do I mean, why is it taking so damn long to fix the problem of a defense? I mean, it's not like we have the same defensive coordinator for 20 years. We have gone through Mark Juan Emanuel, um, consequently Mike Smith, who was a defensive guru. I don't even remember who the defensive coordinator back then was. We've gone through Raheem Morris temporary. We've gone through Dan Quinn. Now we got Dean Pease. People say Dean Pease is a great coach, just doesn't have the players. Okay, well, whose fault is that? That's not what he said during the offseason. Dan Dean Pease is like, we're going to be fast and physical like Dan Quinn. So obviously he thinks our players are good. I mean, he sees them a lot more than we do. All we do is see him on news clips and training camp and football games running all over the place looking like completely like like little chickens when they're born and they hand, you know, like I got big chickens all over, little chickens all over the place just and that's what they're doing. Found the defensive players from Pass rushers, linebackers, secondary cornerbacks are just running around like like little chickens in a hen, and like you know you know just like this like the uh, Wizard of Oz, ring ring, just running around, have no damn clue what they're doing, and I blame the coaches for that. But let's just be real: the only good defensive players we have, Grady Jarrett, Deion Jones, that is it, man. As far as I'm concerned, everybody else is either. Uh, a draft like AJ Terrell with potential. Um, who else? Who else do we got on defense? You know, we had Keanu Neal, and he got hurt for two years, and now he bolted to Dallas. I mean, just, just look, just look at what the, what what Arthur Blank has allowed. He's allowed he allowed Thomas Dimitrov to run this team to the ground and overpay tons of players. Like maybe he had billions of dollars to throw away from his Home Depot investments and success. He said, "Oh, whatever." Arthur Blank believes anything, man. And you know he wants to win bad. But he clearly has no idea what it takes to, to put a Super Bowl championship winning football team on the field. He throws money away like crazy. I mean, look at the defensive players that we've wasted money on. Paul Solei, Pierre Jerry, Desmond Trufant. Um, hey, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. Car's in the shop. My car's in the shop. I'll be out a couple days. Keanu Neal, um, it, Vic Busley, Dante Failure. I mean, what are we doing with this damn money, man? What are we doing with this money? Just throwing money at players and they, and they can't tackle a paper bag. They can't tackle the wind. They can't tackle a slow turtle. They can't tackle a hundred-year-old grandma or grandfather. They can't, they can't tackle a still picture. I mean, football, I mean, these... Receivers and running backs could be standing still and we'd find a way to miss them. I mean, this is terrible. So, as far as I'm concerned, Falcon, some Falcon fans don't like it, but well, get rid of Grady Jarrett. Cause I don't care if he's double teamed or triple teamed. If he's double teamed or triple teamed, that usually means the, uh, the other offense don't, does not trust anybody else that we have. That's like, you know, you know, when you got a top receiver, you double team him. 
and make somebody else beat you. Clearly, Grady Jarrett is one player. But clearly, no, no offense is worried about the other ten fucking guys on our defense. From pass rushers to linebackers or secondary, they're like, okay, we'll take away their best player and, 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 and we got them beat. That's fact. So what does that mean? That means we clearly aren't getting good players. Not even capable players. And still, when Grady Jarrett has opportunity, he doesn't do much. He doesn't. Stephen Means, Dante Failure missing a damn open sack on third down that consequently would have put them at, like, what, fourth down and 85? They may have even converted that. Who the hell knows? You got cornerbacks that are looking at the damn ball, go right into the receiver's hand in the end zone on a busted play, but yet Washington knocks down our final play. Boy, they clearly know what they're doing over there. They may not. They may give up a lot of points, but when crunch time matters, they know what to do. Atlanta never does. How many times have we seen uh, Atlanta defenders watch a touchdown just go right into the receiver's hands instead of knocking it away? I mean, come on, man. There was no reason to lose this game uh, this past Sunday. None. And then people jump on Matt Ryan. Clearly, they're 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 hit with the stupid stick. We got cornerbacks that we're all, I mean, I mean, thing is that throughout the years, we're, these year in and year out, we're always talking about potential on the cornerbacks. How, not, how long are we going to have potential with these quarter, with these cornerbacks? You know, we had Alford, we had, uh, we have I, Isaiah Oliver, Kate, was it, uh, uh, I, I'm so pissed off I can't even name these players who are no longer here. Desmond Trufant, are any of these players that we release, are they succeeding anywhere else? No, because they suck. Trufant is terrible. He got released by the Pudats. Duke Riley, is he still even playing? Keon O'Neill, has he done anything in Dallas? Robert Alford, is he even playing anymore? What are we doing here in Atlanta? What 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 is Arthur Blank what is running through his head? What is conv- what, what are these stupid coaches uh, telling Arthur Blank that convinces him that that that, that they know what they're doing? When it's the same mistakes every game, every year for the past three years, into the middle, t- since, 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 look, it's, first of all, it's been going since, you know, before Arthur Blank got here. But since Arthur Blank got here, look at these teams that we've allowed to blow championship opportunities. He came in 2001, 2002, we lost it in the uh, divisionals. 2004, we lost it in the uh, NFC championship game. 2010, we lost it in the divisionals at home, gave up 48 damn points. 2011, lost 24 to 2. 2012, we blew a 17 nothing lead and a 24 14 lead. And we blew it in the fourth quarter, same way. We can't, we couldn't stop a, a nosebleed. We couldn't stop Niagara Falls. We lost it at home. And then 2013, 14, 15 sucked. Because clearly everybody started to bolt, and Arthur Blank had no idea how, how to replace anybody. 2016, the biggest choke ever in the world in any sport. Right? 2017, yeah, that was the best defensive effort that we had, and we still lost. Like, what, 18 to 12 or, or 15 10 or whatever the hell it was. And then 18, 19, 20. Just terrible. Bad signings, horrible coaches, digging up coaches from, from the retirement home. Bringing back stupid coaches who, who failed in the past, thinking it's going to change. I mean, Arthur Blank has nobody to blame but himself because his evaluation of, of talent in football is horrible. Maybe if the coaches uh, had a Home Depot background or a carpentry background, maybe they would do something. But this is terrible. Again, it happens every week, every year. So that says something. We don't have coaches who can who, – they know what the problem is. They know what the problem is. They just are, are incapable of fixing it. And we are incapable of getting the right players to fix it. I mean, my goodness gracious. How many years are we going to be talking about bad tackling? How many years are we going to be talking about a lack of damn pass rush? How many years are we going to be talking about the defense can't get the offense off the field on third down? How many times How many times in years are we going to be talking about, you know, uh, the fact that uh, we're running around like Keystone Cops and can't do anything? It gets annoying, man. It really does get annoying. If I see improvement consistently, then I know you are doing something right. We're just getting beat. We're getting beat because we're doing the same damn things that we've done the last three years and in the middle 2000s. I mean, for real. 
It's, I mean, why should we get upset by it? It's like the highest form of insanity is when you keep repeating the same mistakes that are costing you games. It don't matter who's here. It don't matter what defensive coach we have here. It don't matter what head coach we have here. It doesn't matter what secondary coach or linebackers coach, whatever. The offense has issues at times, but the defense is why we haven't won a Super Bowl in the in the Arthur Blank era here and, and before. Defense has never really been that good out of the whole existence of this franchise, ever. Because we have no fucking clue what we're doing here. And, we, and, and we're just wasting money and wasting talent. The only, the only thing that for sure that the Falcons do excellent every every year and every week is excellent weeks of practice. The Atlanta Falcons leave all their Super Bowl rings on the practice field each week. It, I mean, if you could crown a Super Bowl champion with excellent weeks of practice, that would be it. Or maybe they don't. Maybe they're not having an excellent week of practice. Maybe the coaches have no clue what an excellent week of practice looks like because if you're going to keep coming on video, uh, coaches saying that we had an excellent week of practice and then you show that every week, I question what the hell you're doing during practice and what do you consider excellent week of practice? Just terrible, man. Anyways, I ran it enough. Uh, I'm getting ready for, for the game tonight to watch it, to stream it, and I'm getting ready to uh, stream uh, another disappointing loss against probably the worst team in NFL history, the New York Jets. Um, yeah. How bad will that be? And then we got a bye week. It's terrible, man. Terrible, terrible, terrible. I don't even know what to say anymore. I mean, I do, but why? I'm the form of insanity because I'm repeating the same issues over and over again and expecting them to change. I'm expecting these coaches who are professionals to fix it because they see other teams in the NFL get quarterbacks off the field on third down, have a good pass rush, knock balls down if they can't intercept it, and tackling. But no, the Falcons are oblivious to that. I mean, why are we even on the field? All these teams on Sunday, you know what they should do? They should just be lining up against an empty backfield. Literally, like take all the uh, Falcon defensive players off because that's what it seems like. I mean, they might as well not be on the field because that's what it seems like. These offenses go down the field with ease. It's almost, it's really, it's like they're battling against nothing. So we might as well not put anything on the field. So I implore uh, Dean Pease and his sorry-ass defense to just not even get on the field each week. We might stand a better chance with nothing in the on, on the field. Like maybe the offensive players will be like, will get so, they'll be like, oh my God, there's nobody on the field. And they'll trip up and drop balls because everything looks so easy. Because when they're contested with players on the field, they make plays. So why not just have anybody on? Just have it all completely empty every week. Maybe we'll win. Just terrible. Road to 3K. Subscribe to the channel. Congrats to Laugh Not Famous for getting over 3K. Thanks for supporting him. Continue to support him. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I think I'm about done now. I think I'm going to go um, uh, stand in traffic and uh, just look at cars go by. And I'll see you in the next one.